In this next step in our solution of this fixed fix beam problem, we're going to write the compatibility equations and then that will set, uh, set us up finally to, to uh, execute our math steps and solve for our redundant reactions. We've stripped off these two uh, reactions here at the right fixed end, the shear and the rotation. The shear is the um, this delta 1, the rotation or that is the, the moment is delta 2. The displacements there are equal ultimately to 0 and we have then the three systems. The primary one, then we put one redundant reaction back into place and then the other redundant reactions in the previous step we calculated all those displacements that went along with that. So for our first compatibility equation we'll focus on degree of freedom 1 that delta 1 will equal the displacement that happens at that location in that system plus the displacement that happens at that location in the primary system plus the displacement happens when we put the unit load on here and we have that translation there's your F11 but that's going to have to get scaled up by the actual value of R1 plus then the displacement that happens at that location caused by the second redundant reaction. Ah. It's easy to get those two swapped. First one indicates the location of the displacement, the second one what redundant reaction you're doing. So the way you always catch that mistake is if you always write the displacement and then times the reaction, then these two subscripts should be the same. So that's our first compatibility equation. The second one then is going to be delta 2, 0 plus F at 2 caused by the reaction at one, or unit load at 1 times the reaction plus then F2, 2, 2 R2. Now in the previous steps we've already performed those calculations. We can put them in this matrix form that you see here <coughs> where we'll collect all the flexibility coefficients there and we can take these delta 1 0 and delta 2 0, all those coming from the primary system and move them back over here to the left side that is. So we'll have a on the first equation 0 minus and then remember that first one was a minus 5 PL cubed over 48 EI and then the second one <coughs> would be 0 minus a negative PL squared over 8 EI and then that will equal this flexibility matrix in each and every case we have an EI um, in the denominator that we can pull out so we'll do that and then F11 was uh, L cubed over 3 EI and F12 was L squared over 2 EI and respectively multiplied by R1 and R2. And then down here in the second equation then we would have for F21 uh, we'd have also L squared over 2. Remember there's a symmetry that's going on in the flexibility matrix. And then down here on F22 the other diagonal we have just L over EI of course that I've already factored out. And that sets up for us then the simultaneous equations that we need to um, use to solve for our unknown reaction forces R1 and R2.